Hello my dear friends welcome to this class in this class we will going to study about the angle modulation so you might have heard about the amplitude modulation you might have learned about amplitude modulation in amplitude modulation what we have done is basically the amplitude of the carrier wave moves or varies with the message wave or the baseband wave so in this particular thing we will see that what is the basic difference between the angle modulation and the amplitude modulation so the first question is angle modulation versus amplitude modulation no now first thing is we will try to understand mathematically that how these two things are different from each other so let us suppose ac cos 2 pi fct plus phi 0 is a sinusoidal signal let us suppose this is our standard signal that we generally use so i write it as st signal is equals to ac cos 2 pi fct plus phi 0 okay now let's understand the terminologies related to this particular carrier signal ac is represented as the amplitude okay amplitude of the carrier signal this is the amplitude then fc represents the frequency okay the frequency of this carrier signal and phi 0 is the initial phase angle okay it is basically the initial phase angle of this carrier signal okay initial phase now in the amplitude modulation you have heard about the message signal mt which uh, i can write this mt as the baseband signal as well okay the baseband signal the signal which i have to transmit okay now in case we have amplitude modulation what happens is the amplitude of this signal of this carrier signal is basically a function of message signal so i can write that ac that is amplitude is basically a function of message signal when we have the condition of amplitude modulation that is we try to modulate the amplitude of the carrier signal okay with with the message signal the baseband signal and so that we can transmit our signal easily but when we talk about this particular signal okay if you observe this signal we have here three different things one is we have this amplitude okay second thing we have this frequency f okay and third thing we have this phase now first time when we are transmitting a signal a baseband signal using this carrier signal what we have done is we have simply modified the amplitude but we have two more parameters which we can also which can also be modified so let's talk about the modification of this frequency and this phase if i try to mod uh, modulate or if i try to modify this frequency and phase so can i use these two terms as well for transmitting my signal i can see that in this particular equation you can observe that ac amplitude when it is a function of um, baseband signal we called it as amplitude modulation now when this inner part inside this cos theta whatever you can see here this is the angle i can write this angle as as a function of time because it is 2 pi fc 2 pi fc times t plus phi i can see that this angle is basically a function of time okay now in this particular angle what i can see that if i modify this angle with the baseband signal if i modify this angle with the help of this baseband signal i will call it as the angle modulation okay i will call it as the angle modulation now what is angle modulation ultimately it is basically the modification of or the modulation of this angle inside this cos phi okay it's cosine angle inside this cosine this angle when it gets modified we call it as angle modulation this is how we can understand now in angle modulation we can do two different modulations one is frequency modulation okay one is frequency modulation and another is phase modulation so we have two types of modulation available here one is frequency modulation and one is phase modulation so we can see here if i modify this frequency if i say that the frequency is basically a function of i can write it as let us suppose ft ft is a frequency or instantaneous frequency if it is a function of baseband signal we call this as frequency modulation and in case of phase if this phi is basically a function of message signal we call this as the phase modulation okay so now we will understand that uh, angle modulation is basically modifying this angle with the help of baseband signal now a question will come to your mind that if we have this amplitude modulation then why we are going for this frequency modulation or phase modulation okay it's a common question you may feel so 
let me answer this question that why instead even though we have this amplitude modulation and uh, but still we are focusing on fm and pm frequency and phase modulation so the answers are very simple some simple very simple points so why fm and pm why we are studying this fm and pm the first point is the frequency modulated wave and phase modulated wave are more immune to channel noise okay as you know that am signals are not if we able to transmit it for a long distance but a frequency modulated or a phase modulated signal can be transmitted over a very long distance so that's why this is a very important point that it is more immune to channel noise then second thing is it is more immune to non linear distortion now you know what is a non linear distortion that is a di the distortion which is at different for different amplitudes okay because as we know that in amplitude modulation when the amplitude increases the distortion is not a linear one it's a non linear so that kind of uh, distortion rarely happens in the frequency or amplitude model uh, frequency or phase modulated waves so that's why this is the benefit of this third thing is amplitude fading do not create any problem as you know that amplitude fading is a very 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 biggest problem in transmitting signals because once the amplitude is faded we cannot use the amplitude modulation for correctly identifying the baseband signal but in case if you have frequency or phase modulated signal this amplitude fading will not going to affect our uh, our final signal it's because it's simple in frequency modulation the frequency will going to play the role and in phase modulation the phase of the wave that is how much it is shifted towards right or left that will going to vary so that will not going to affect our baseband signal or baseband message okay so ultimately i want to say that amplitude fading is not a common problem in frequency and phase modulation that's why we are focusing on fm and pm instead of amplitude modulation okay now as we know that this is a these are the benefits of the amplitude uh, these are the benefits of fm and pm but with some benefit there comes some drawbacks as well so if i talk about the cons that we are facing with the frequency and, uh, and phase modulation the biggest biggest challenge that we are facing is that high bandwidth the bandwidth requires very very high for this okay the transmission bandwidth is more than twice compared to am okay the arithmetic uh, sorry the amplitude modulation in case of amplitude modulation if the if the bandwidth is let us suppose w then in case of fm or pm we will going to have the bandwidth which is greater than 2w okay so it's a very very high bandwidth you can see so this much high bandwidth means it's a loss of lots of consumption of the spectrum so less signals can be transmitted compared to am okay so that's why these are some pros and cons of fm and pm okay but all the way we can say that it is it is totally dependent on the application where we are going to use these signals that will going to determine that which modulation we have to follow okay now moving further so this is like a basic understanding that what is fm and what is pm so as we told you this fm is basically the frequency modulation that is modulation of frequency with respect to the baseband signal and in phase modulation we do the modulation of phase with respect to baseband signal okay now let us try to identify let us try to determine mathematically how a phase modulated wave will look like or how a angle or, or the frequency modulated wave will look like so first let us talk about the phase modulation now in case of phase modulation as i told you so this is our signal st this is ac cos 2 pi sct plus phi 0 this is our basic signal this is our carrier signal okay now we have to introduce the baseband signal inside the signal so that it can be carried can be transferred from one place to another now you can see here in this particular signal there is no message signal involved but i have three parameters where i can involve the message signal one is this amplitude second is this frequency and third is this complete angle okay now as i am telling you about the phase modulation it means i am going to definitely change the phase of the wave or change the phase of the carrier wave with respect to the message wave or the base band wave okay so let us suppose mt is basically our message signal okay now i can say that theta theta t that is the angle or the phase is basically 2 pi fc t plus 5 okay now since i want to introduce this mt inside this angle what i can write is theta t is equals to 2 pi fct plus 50 plus 
KPMT. Okay, now that is means I am relating this theta with respect to this MT. As this MT, this baseband signal varies, this theta will definitely going to marry. So this theta will definitely going to vary. So it means this theta is related to is or we can say this theta is basically a function of baseband signal. So whenever this MT or the baseband signal changes, this theta will automatically change. That is the phase of the wave, phase of this carrier wave will automatically going to vary. Okay. So what we can see here, this theta. Now let us suppose this initial phase is zero. Okay. Let us assume that this initial phase is zero. I can write that this theta is basically equals to 2 pi fc times t plus kp times mt. Now what is this kp? kp is basically known as the phase sensitivity. This kp is basically the phase sensitivity. It shows, it represents that how much sensitive this phase is with the baseband signal. The more this kp, more the sensitivity, less this kp, less the sensitivity. So we can see that kp is uh, it's like a constant. Now if I ask you what is the unit of this kp, what can be the unit of kp? You can assume, see, you can clearly see here that kp times nt has to be in the radians. Okay, kp times mt, this particular figure is in the radians. And what is the unit of mt? mt is basically in, mt is in volts. Okay, and this complete combination, this product of these two has to be in the radians. So definitely the unit of kp will come out to be radian per volt. Okay. This is a unit of Kp that is the phase sensitivity or phase constant we can see this. Okay. Or the phase uh, PM constant we can say the phase modulation constant. So this is how we can write that the signal the amp, the phase modulated wave will look like the general equation of phase modulated wave phase modulated will look like st that is pm st pm phase modulated it will look like ac will remain as it is because this is the amplitude but we are not varying this amplitude so cause of in place of theta i can write it as 2 pi fc t plus kp times mt okay this is how our phase modulated wave will look like so this is the general equation of the phase modula modulated wave okay now let's move to the frequency modulated wave. Okay, the frequency modulated wave, we have to see this. How does this wave, how does this particular wave will look like? So as you can see in the phase modulated we have wave, we have modified it the wave. Okay, we have modified the phase of the wave. But in case of frequency modulated, we will identify the frequency. So frequency of the wave at any point of time will be 2 pi fc. Oh, sorry, not 2 pi fc. Let me correct it. The frequency would be fc plus kf times mt okay that is i am varying the frequency of the signal with respect to the baseband signal okay the 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 changes in the baseband signal the shape of the baseband signal is as it is carry forwarded to the frequency of the carrier signal so that's what we have to determine here that fit that is instantaneous frequency at any point of time is equals to fc that is the frequency of the carrier wave or the unmodulated wave okay fc is what it is generally represented as the frequency of unmodulated wave is the frequency of unmodulated wave now i can see here that instantaneous frequency is the frequency plus kf times mt now what is kf kf will be known as the frequency sensitivity Kf is basically represented as a frequency sensitivity and more the Kf, more the frequ this frequency is sensitive to this baseband signal. Okay. Now, moving further, I can see that uh, this frequency F, Fit, okay, this, what is this frequency stands for? I can write frequency Fit is basically equals to 1, time, 1 by 2 pi times d by dt of theta it. Okay, that is if I differentiate the phase with respect to time, I will get the frequency. This is how we can write, okay. The differentiation of phase with respect to time will give you frequency. So in place of this fi, I can write this particular term. I can write this term. So I will get an equation like this.